The ability to set timers in JavaScript can be really powerful. Uh, I often use it for uh, hiding or displaying elements um, after a certain amount of time. So imagine that you have some kind of like status message that you want to display. Like uh, let's say somebody deletes a task and you want to, um, after it's been successfully deleted, you just say, hey, it's been deleted. Like task ID 45 has been deleted. Go ahead, you know, and then just after 30 seconds, a minute, uh, that just fades away or deletes or something else. Um, that would include, up to, you know, adding classes after a certain amount of time or just uh, having an if statement that triggers after a certain amount of time. Let's see how we can do something like that or at least how the timer part of that would work. I'm here in our main library and all I have set up is just a, a div with the H1 app. So if we go and take a look at that, this is this is all we have. So I want to add another uh, just like a hello world uh, message here. So we're going to just do a p tag and a hello world. And unsurprisingly, this is now going to show up and we can see that. Okay. But let's say I want to have this disappear after several seconds, like after, I don't know, 10 seconds or so. So let's come back into here. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use an internal um, internal state uh, in order to um, uh, in order to like know whether or not to display this. So I don't think uh, no, this is left over from the previous lessons. I don't think I need these right now. So I'm just going to go ahead and get rid of. Let's see, uh, I'll just do everything inside of here. We don't need to worry about that. Um, okay, so let's create like an internal store. Should we be displaying this? So let, um, should say, hi, um, you're gonna be a use state uh, and our init function is gonna be true. We should be saying hi. Okay, now to determine, like then to use this as part of like our Boolean here, and I say if a dereferenced should say hi, then display this. Okay, still nothing should really change here. If we uh, come back to our code, we're still we're still saying hi. All right. So next up, I want to uh, I want to set up a timer that runs as soon as this component loads. And after X number of milliseconds, it it's going to uh, switch, should say hi, to, uh, to false. Okay, so glue has some timers for us. So if we do glue timers, uh, we, get, uh, we get two choices here. We can use callback style or future style. So basically, do we want something like uh, to use an async await style? or callback style. I'm gonna go ahead and use callback style here uh, right now, but if you do use async style, you're gonna need that uh, wasm bind gen futures block to have it be inside of an async block. However, this that kind of callback or timer would be really helpful if you have other features that you're working with here. Uh, we're not, so this is the best choice for the job right now. Okay, so we have uh, callback. Um, and then we can choose interval or timeout. So this is the equivalent of like, you know, set interval or set timeout. Interval is going to run every N uh, milliseconds. So if I want something to repeatedly run over and over and over again, set interval is the way to go. Timeout is just run it once and that's it. Um, like yeah, as soon as it's done, it's done. Both of these are cancelable. Uh, you can get something out of it that you can then uh, uh, cancel and uh, and stop if you really want to. Uh, that's a little bit more important in my opinion for the interval, but sometimes for a timeout, if if like the um, a component is being destructured and you're using a use effect to uh, sort of determine, oh, 
yeah, we're going down. You probably want to cancel all of your timers. Otherwise, weird things can happen. Uh, okay, so I'm going to do a timeout here. Uh, and a new. Uh, okay, so how many milliseconds we want this to run? Uh, I think I said, like, uh, let's do five seconds. Um, and then a callback. Well, this is this is our, our uh, closure. What do we want to have happen when uh, we run stuff in here? Well, we're going to have to do a move. To move should say hi inside of here. So I want to actually clone clone this. Uh, so let should say hi clone. Should say hi and we'll clone you. Then I'm gonna move that inside of here and then I want to set this to be false. So should say hi clone dot set to false. All right, so now when this loads, five seconds later, it should it should do the thing. Except we're being told that there's a problem here. So uh, there is a unused timeout. Uh, right. So basically, normally in JavaScript, this would be all you need if you're running some kind of like set timeout. You don't need to worry about what they return or anything else. Like you could just sort of ignore that. Rest not so much the case. It, it's going to force you to uh, to handle it or at least to acknowledge it. So we're going to do forget. So if you do drop, basically, like how, how are you going to handle this when it drops, right? Um, forget, however, is going to allow us to forget, tell it that um, we are going to just, you know, ignore it, forget, forget about it, uh, just let it happen. Um, it does give us this I32, which we can use to call a cancel on later if we really want to. Okay, so uh, this is going to happen. So now hit save, come back to here, hit refresh. And after five seconds, hello world disappears. So that basically is how we can now have a timer and uh, affect things in our app later. Um, it still works very similar to JavaScript, uh, as in we are, um, we're still having to work with callbacks or async await, essentially. Um, it, we can grab the, uh, the sort of like the ID of this timer, and this will be an I32, and I believe that we can call, we can use WebSys clear timeout with handle if I really want to stop this. So if I use websys, uh, we have, oh, I need, I need, I would need to bring in the, uh, I would need to bring in all of those, um, the feature for, for it, which I don't have right now. Uh, so I guess suffice it to say that, uh, if you did, uh, want to, this ID is what you'd use to cancel it. All right, that's all I wanted to show you is that this is possible and uh, that you can set up timers inside of your code. Uh, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye.